Wendy is with us in studio today to tackle a couple of issues. Satellite disc installations gone wrong, pharmacy purchases and shrinking shoes, believe it or not. <laughs> I can't wait to get to that story. But first, just a reminder that if you want to ask a question or share your own experience on topic. Now, when you need a job done, it's very tempting, I know, to simply open up Google Maps and search for a relevant service provider who is close by, who will be able to come in a hurry. But a number of multi-choice customers have learned the hard way that that is a risky strategy, at least when it comes to satellite dish and decoder installations. And you might end up with a very nasty shock at the end of said installation. Uh, Not the electric kind of shock, but the budgetary kind. Uh, Wendy, what's the backstory on this one? Okay, so... Um, For years, MultiChoice has advised its DSTV subscribers to consult its list of accredited installers on its website. That's the um, MultiChoice website. Mm -hmm. And only to use one of those when installing a dish or decoder or needing anything else uh, along those lines done. The advice I've been told by a MultiChoice spokesman is printed because I said, okay, that's all very well, but how do you tell people this? Yeah. How do you get that message out? So apparently it's p- printed on the side of decoder boxes, and she sent me an example. It's written into the salespeople's script, um, and and the salespeople are also supposed to say, you know, um, help them uh, find a suitable installer in their area, right, to make the search a bit easier. But she did concede we have external sales partners and are unable to confirm what they communicate to customers when they make the sales. I think they're far more um, interested in making the sales than in, in what happens in the after-sales environment. Exactly, yeah. So yeah. I dare say that a lot of people just aren't aware um, that... There is an accredited list that you should work with. Yes, and we'll get to all the reasons why that makes a lot of sense. In a a little while. But on the line with us is one of the people who didn't get the message to use an accredited supplier, and that was our listener, Brian Davey of Newlands. Wendy, in his case, with very costly results. Before we speak to Brian, won't you just briefly summarize what happened? Sure. So so Brian uh, and his wife paid close to 17,000 rand to a satellite installer. They quite understandably had a strong feeling that they'd been ripped off and so he wrote to me about their experience they found satellite king via a google search and uh, emailed this request can i please book a technician to install a new tv dstv decoder soundbar and blu-ray player and connect to internet so satellite king sent installers who went by the name of sky digital sat and that crowd issued their invoice in the name of simply satellite repairs so having read brian's account i contacted multi-choice and asked if they would consider instructing one of their accredited installers which service the newlands area to go to the davies home and do a professional analysis of that almost seventeen thousand rand job they obliged and very quickly too i mean they were there That's within, great. The, within i think the next day they were there and the resultant report which was submitted to multi-choice and and then to me by them was absolutely shocking remember they paid almost seventeen thousand rand that job according to the accredited installers should have cost around 950 rand and that was including something that wasn't necessary to replace they said okay so let's talk about the detail here wendy where was that sixteen thousand odd discrepancy what did the report say okay no equipment was replaced and that's the most shocking part the existing fiberglass satellite dish dish was in good order good condition as was the existing smart l and b which essentially takes multiple cables and feeds them into a single cable distribution. The installer had also insisted on replacing the client's HDMI cable with a so-called superior one, but what they put in was nothing more than the standard HDMI cable replacement. Um, The good news is that the quality of the signal is good and all functions are working correctly, so this wasn't a case of shoddy workmanship, it was just a case of a rip-off, and actually, if you charge someone for something that you didn't replace, that is actually fraud, and over my years in this game, We've we've um, I, I collaborated with Carte Blanche once actually of my own washing machine. We, and I called these guys and we knew them to be dodgy and marked all my parts and we were charged for replacement parts, whereas we could prove through the markings that 
Oh, they're very all old. There. Yes, so mm. this is a this is a game that applies to all sorts of um, appliance type, you know, call someone out to your home situations or even have them take your stuff away to work on. Okay, as we've talked about before, bad idea to have them take it away. But in this case, so the accredited installer came, assessed the job, said, okay, no parts have been replaced here. The so-called superior cable is not a superior cable at all. It's a bog standard HDMI one. Um, what would they have charged for the same job, Wendy? Right. So the, they would have charged a call-out fee of 475 rand, which is exactly the amount that the non-accredited installer would have charged for the same, so no problem there. Additional labor um, of, of an hour of 350 rand, so that, uh, that's, bear that, no, that, um, that amount. In mind, yeah. yeah. And to supply one HDMI cable, which was actually unnecessary, they would have charged 190 rand. That that amounts to 945 rand. So well under 1,000 rand, especially if you subtract that unnecessary cable. So when you then look and ask, where does the huge price discrepancy come in? So they would have charged under 1,000 rand. Brian paid close to 17,000 rand. When you, when you dive into the invoice Brian was given, you see where that 16,000 rand in difference sits. Won't you explain? Of course. So close to 10,000 rand for that new fiberglass dish. Which wasn't new at all. Which wasn't okay. new. Uh, um, which wasn't supplied at all, close to 3,000 Rand for a UDMI, UDMI receiver, more than 500 Rand for an optical cable, another 2,500 Rand for labor installation versus um, 350. 350 Rand. From the accredited yes. uh, assessment. Uh, so you can see, I mean, the description, the huge doesn't quite cover Even begin to scratch what the, the surface. discrepancy is, yes. Right, we've got Brian on the line. And Brian, thank you for being willing to talk about this so that others can learn from this horrible experience that you've had. Welcome to Cape Talk. Oh, thank you, Papa. So obviously this report confirmed your suspicions that you had indeed been ripped off. But wow, I don't think anybody realized just how badly the magnitude of that ripoff uh, would be presented. I mean, how do you feel uh, having be been presented with the alternative invoice, which would have been under a thousand rand? Well, uh, look, we we mainly we mainly um, um, angry with ourselves. Um, oh, <laughs> I mean, you have to be. I mean, these are all rookie errors. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I wasn't really aware of the concept of an accredited supplier to DSTV, but but even so, I mean, the, the concept of of checking out who's going to work in your in your house um, still applies, and um, you know we failed that test. Um, you know, we preoccupied with other aspects of our daily life and we needed a, a new setup and we did a quick Google and the site had some nice pictures and whatever. Yeah. Well, and, and we found it, we organized yeah. it and, you know, a little bit suspicious that the people who came sort of had a different name and the people who invoiced us had another name. <laughs> And were there any, yeah. Wendy here, Brian, thanks uh, um, for me for agreeing to come on. Um, were there any other red flags apart from those name discrepancies that occurred to you while those, um, while those workmen were in your house doing the job? You know, I, I, I wasn't concentrating on the matter probably, but my son came to me and he said, um, he said, Dad, I bought a perfectly good cable that these guys have, have scoffed at and they've put in this other cable. And I don't know the details of it, um, whether my son was right or wrong, but this, this sort of drew my attention to that, the fact that I must maybe have a look. He was right. So I, I, got the invoice, I got the invoice out, and the first thing I did was I, I tried the website um, on the invoice, and it doesn't exist. Um, okay. Oh, okay. Repairs.co.za. And, and then, then I found out there were various names, and I did a little um, check on Hello Peter, and uh, not very flattering reviews on Hello Peter. Mm. Um, and then I ran the invoice by two of to my work colleagues who, who are a bit more practical than I am. And, you know, they both laughed at me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, but they... We've got spare satellite dishes in our garage. These things cost 1,000 Rand or 3,000 Rand max. And it was... I thought, let's yeah. take it up a bit further. It was actually worse than that. Yours was perfectly fine. Yeah. So exactly, you paid, yeah. you were overcharged <laughs> for a new dish that wasn't even installed. I mean, Brian, as Wendy pointed out in her correspondence and in her earlier conversation, it's fraudulent to charge somebody for supplying an item that was not installed. Have you considered taking this further and contemplating uh, laying criminal charges? Well, look, it's still sort of sinking in, you know. I thought I'd been rip, ripped off as a, as, a, as a silly old newlet pensioner by 100%. I didn't realize I'd been ripped off by infinity percent. But uh, oh. I mean, it's, a, it's a crime has been committed, and um, I, sh I certainly should take further steps. 
Wendy, did you try engaging with Sky Digital Sat directly on Brian's behalf? I did. I phoned the number that was on that invoice, that Sky High invoice, and I got hold. I had some difficulties engaging, can't hear you, all the rest, phone you back, didn't phone back. But then we did engage. Um, he gave his name as Ernest Washington of Sky Digital Sat. He said they were third party uh, um, suppliers to Satellite King. And um, I got a different we, uh, email address from him than was on the invoice. So, and he asked me to send him my media query, which raised all these issues we've just discussed, compared the two uh, invoices and all the rest. And then he phoned me and said that um, he denied that um, the dish and the cable were not replaced. He said, we did replace them. So I said, well, do you have an invoice for you buying them? And he said, yes, I'll send it to you. But even if he had, which he hasn't to date, it doesn't prove that those were the ones that were installed, were installed yeah. in the Davies house, home. So so that's a bit neither here nor there. Um, so I did attempt you know, to give them right of reply and his, it can be summarized by not guilty. We didn't do that. Um, so I, I would or urge Brian to, to lay a charge of fraud and, and see this through. Um, in the meantime, MultiChoice has confirmed to me that neither Satellite King nor Sky Digital Sat are accredited companies as installers with um, MultiChoice, unless they are using a different trading name. And different trading names seems to be part of the problem in yes. this case uh, of the red flags. <laughs> Brian, I'm really sorry that you had this experience, but thank you for being willing to talk about it so that others uh, don't get hoodwinked the same way. And please do do let us know if you have any progress. Uh, if you do decide to take it forward and, and lay a charge, please, please keep in touch with us about the outcome. Will do. Thanks for the opportunity to uh, warn other people. Thanks. Thanks so much, Brian Davy of Newlands. Wendy, obviously, I mean, an awful situation for Brian, and I hope he does take it further. I'm with you. I really think they need to, to face the consequences. But what has come out of this is some very good practical advice from MultiChoice on what you should be looking for uh, if you are going to, to purchase a decoder or want to install a, a satellite dish. As you said at the start, they want you to use an accredited supplier off a list that is on their website. Um, what other advice did they share with you? Okay. Um, yes, that or use our website. Um, if you're unable to find them there, they are likely no longer accredited or they have not updated their details on the database. So, so check. I asked how often MultiChoice gets complaints from consumers who have used dodgy installers that they found via other means, and the answer is simply often. We usually receive complaints from customers who have Googled for a DSTV installer near them, and this is why we continue to encourage our customers to use our official channels for installers. I was just thinking as I was preparing for today's show that years ago, I mean, in my early days of consumer journalism in the late 90s, early 2000s, MultiChoice was extremely proactive about warning, uh, about put, getting the message out. They put out press releases, yeah. um, visit me in the newsroom to say, you know, please put this out. And I, I wrote a lot about it, but they don't, I don't remember them doing it for years Recently, and years and yeah. years. So I, I think some onus does sit on them to be more proactive about it. Um, they have, and this is why... Um, it's good to go with an accredited installer. They have a multi-choice, has a vigorous, rigorous process in place, which includes reviewing the invoice and scheduling an on-site QA to assess the work done on-site in comparison to what was charged. Some of the invoices that the non-accredited installers use use the company trademarks, so they're using multi-choice, so look beyond... Use their name in vain. They use yeah. the logo when mm. they have no right to. Um, without a signed agreement with an installer, we are unable to implement any consequence management, says MultiChoice. We do advise customers to pursue alternative measures to hold the installer accountable, including going to the police. Okay. Installers are, are also added to the unauthorized list, and this is shared with distributors. So, if so you, it's obviously a common problem, Wendy. It is a common yeah. problem. So the, the quick advice is to always do your own checks to verify whether an installer is accredited or not. Don't just go by a, a trademark of a multi-choice logo that someone might be using on their invoice or, or shop banner or their websites. And, and then... Um, yeah, it's it goes a lot further. Okay, so I want to talk about this because there's good practical advice. But Wendy, you've important WhatsApp in from one of our listeners making such a good point. Please use community WhatsApp groups for references. Ask people in your area actually what I put who you on they've my notes. used. And I yes. know that's one of the things that you wanted to highlight because this doesn't only apply to satellite dish installations. It no. applies to many other It implies, it implies locksmiths is another one that people get caught. We've spoken about it on this show, yeah. but not for a while. So people will, it's, they're usually in a bit of a panic. They rock the 
keys in the car, if they've locked themselves out of their home, and they go locksmith Newlands or whatever. Find the closest and one. And you'll get the you'll get the satellite uh, installation version of that. So. Do your research on reputable service providers in your area. And I've actually written in my notes, ask for recommendations on your local WhatsApp groups, WhatsApp groups, which is something we didn't have the benefit of years ago. Ten years ago, yeah. No. And, so, and um, find out what accreditations they have. And now with locksmiths, they have to be registered with the Private Security Industry Regulatory Authority, PSIRA as they render a security service. They can't be unregulated. So you must ask a locksmith to produce a proof of registration with with a P- Sierra, I think they shorten themselves to, um, and check on Sierra's website. I'm going to say it again, P-S-I-R-A, and you will, you will find them to, ver- to register if they are, to find out if they are registered rather. Avoid locksmiths which do not provide an address and don't operate from an established business premises. Um, so the best advice is while in non-crisis mode, locate a locksmith in your area, check to see if they are Sarah registered, ask them for their rates and save their details in your phone for when you need them. And that's the other thing. Don't proceed with any of these things um, without getting a quote first. Because yep. this work was done in the Davies home and then this, this monstrous invoice Arrived produced. without a quote before. So always, yeah. always. The law, the CPA says that a service provider must provide a quote unless the... Um, consumer expressly refuses one or says they don't need one. I mean, who's going to do that? Nobody so, in the right mind, yeah. yeah. Or don't assume that it's going to be fine because if you're, you're, giving, you're writing an, uh, it's a, a blank a, check open for them. Ch- a blank yeah. check, that's the word, a blank check situation. Not that they exist anymore either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the saying will be with us for some yes. time though. Well, Wendy, thank you. Thanks for doing the digging. Brian, again, I'm really sorry that you had this awful experience of that terrible invoice after the fact, but thank you for alerting us to the need to be really meticulous about using an accredited installer. And Wendy, some good advice there on in general, checking in advance and that rocksmith idea that you should find out when you're not in crisis like mode. Like now, like after like the show. after the show, <laughs> go and look it up. Find a reputable, properly registered locksmith in your area. Save that contact to your phone so when it is you standing outside your locked front door or car, you can calmly call on somebody who is reputable and not in panic mode. Yes. Make the kind of mistake Brian made. And remember to ask for a quote before they get busy on the work. Uh, somebody else, uh, Eddie and Musenberg, WhatsApping to suggest perhaps Brian could take his case to the small claims court. Wendy, I mean, it's... it's Yes, it does fall it under the 20,000 limit. Mark, yeah. So, yes, thanks for pointing that out. That is another route to take. In my experience, though, um, the company that he dealt with, the... Uh, just won't engage and um, take part, and then there's a default judgment. And will you will you ever see your money? So uh, he's he's written off the money. What he really what would be helpful is if there was a criminal investigation of this. Um, it's fraud or alternatively um, theft by false pretenses. Okay. Um, but I think it's more fraud. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, sometimes there's pushback, and the the police stations say it's a civil matter and and whatever, but. I just think it's it's worthwhile it's doing it. It's worth fighting. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. to their credit, I suppose the company did sort of engage with me, phoned me, and and said and denied it. So they should have their their right day to, in court. to respond. Yeah, yeah. 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 They okay. will be asked to approve it, and and it'll be interesting. And the the accredited multi choice installer would have to give evidence and everything. But the report's done. You know, the, that work has been done. So I, I would be very interested in seeing this play out. In with a, a pile of evidence going to court yes, with him. Yeah, yes. yeah. We've got Dylan on the line. Dylan, I believe you've had a similar experience, not with a satellite installation, but the same issue of having Googled to find the closest uh, uh, service provider, and it didn't go well. Good afternoon. Ah, yes. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, yeah, we, uh, it was about two weeks ago, and we our, our fridge freezer packed up, and... Uh, and generally, when that when that happens, you kind of uh, you jump on Google, you try and find your 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 your, your nearest sort of reputable uh, repair person, and uh, we did just that. You know, the people that we that we got in were running uh, Google ads. Um, we clicked on the the top ad, and I thought, okay, well, these guys are investing in their company. Uh, they had a twenty four seven WhatsApp line, so I WhatsApp them. It was a Sunday. They were like, that's fine, but we can come out. It's a two hundred rand uh, call out fee to come and assess the situation. Anyway, the guys, uh, they, they came, they apparently uh, repaired our freezer, and uh, we paid them, they left. Uh, they, they obviously couldn't, they couldn't hang around to, 
to, to, to make sure that the fridge and the, well, the freezer was freezing. Um, and uh, it turns out they, they completely scammed us. They ended up uh, damaging the freezer. Uh, we then went... Yeah, we went. We went to uh, we went to the Facebook groups thereafter, uh, asking for some reputable uh, uh, repair people, and we 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 chatted to one or two people, and they said it's a massive uh, uh, issue in the industry. There's there's these fly by night uh, sort of scammers that are that are investing hugely in Google ads to make yes. sure that they're ranking number one, mm. yes. and uh, and they're just they they're going off with people's money, and uh, uh, I try to. I try to WhatsApp them to get them to to, to complete the job, uh, and then it turns out that uh, a lot of the reputable guys don't really want to touch the work that they've done because they've they've actually ended up damaging the <laughs> the units uh, yeah. beyond repair. You know, it's, it, it it takes them it takes they they kind of got to repair it to a point uh, <laughs> of where it was first damaged, and then from there they've got to assess the situation. So so yeah, it was a, a terrible uh, uh, experience, and I think that um, I, I just wanted to warn everyone else out there you know uh, i'm in digital marketing and <laughs> and i didn't feel the I, I didn't feel the signs you know yeah. I, I looked at the website it was reputable i clicked on google ads uh but then i did uh i, I did leave a hello pizza and then i did go to the google reviews and mostly bad reviews uh, oh. so so yeah it's just be, be careful out there huh? Dylan, thanks. Uh, again, appreciate your taking the time to call in and share that story. And Thank very so good point about checking the reviews beforehand, And Wendy. always look for addresses on the website and then check them out. Google Maps. Are they this, where they said they are? It doesn't take that, long. Yeah. Um, so I've been warning about this Google search. It is a natural thing to do. Uh, and what we heard there is the modern version of what used to happen when I first got into this game, which was people would, these companies would invest in really, really big professional looking adverts in the yellow pages yes and the assumption on the consumer's part would be well this must be a, a, a great, reputable a, business yes because yeah. they've got this lovely advert and then now the version is um well they're investing in the advertising on they're Google. coming up on yeah. the first and and it's the same they're playing on the same consumer psychology yeah because they've opt- they've paid for search yes. optimization they must, must be, be reputable yeah. yeah okay dylan sorry for that experience but thank you for sharing it with us when do you uh, if we change tack for a moment, we want to just give listeners an update on a story we mentioned last week in passing. You told us a listener had been inquiring about pharmacy purchases paid off their medical aid savings. And I believe you've had some additional feedback in, in the, the past week since that show. Yes, it took, it took the Council for Medical Schemes, which uh, regulate uh, medical schemes, um, some time to come back to me. Um, the question was, if I'm using my medical scheme savings... Uh, in other words, my money, to buy something from a pharmacy, why are they allowed to charge the medical aid rate, which is higher than what is advertised as the on-shelf price? She says, I generally pay 50 to 100 rand more when they apply the medical aid rate. Um, Is this not enrichment and beneficial to the pharmacy doing this, taking from my medical aid savings as opposed to in-store cash? What wasn't clear there, and I should have asked at the time, is was they automatically doing that or whether... They're offering you a choice. Yes. Yeah. So the answer from the medical, the Council for Medical Schemes is this. There are three issues at play here. The medical scheme rates, the single exit price, and dispensing fees, and the designated service provider. The medical scheme rate is an amount which a medical aid scheme is prepared to pay for specific treatments and procedures. They are usually slightly higher than the guideline prices published in the reference price list, but differ from the, from scheme to scheme. In the case of medicine, single exit price and dispensing fees must be taken into account. The exit price can be thought of as the price at which a pharmacy buys medicine from a a wholesaler, and it's regulated by the National Department of Health, and a medicine may not be sold by a wholesaler at less than the published single exit price. And then there's the dispensing fee, and that's also regulated. And here it comes to the crux. This, the dispensing fee uh, regulations determine a maximum dispensing amount that can be charged for the different single exit price categories. So a pharmacy is allowed to charge anything from the minimum to the maximum of the dispensing fee, depending on the agreement with the scheme or the cash paying patient. Ordinarily, medical schemes will typically negotiate medicine dispensing fees that are substantially below the maximum fee that a pharmacist is allowed to charge. But so the bottom line for me, and that was quite technically stated, is that if you want to use your medical savings to buy over the uh, counter products in a pharmacy because you've accumulated a lot and why not? It's your money. Yeah. Um, 
then um, find one that charges on the that charges minimum dispensing fees and don't be afraid to ask these questions because mm. it affects us and our money so and or else just pay cash well sue's just written in with advice on how she navigates this okay. issue and thank you, th- sue. this is quite a lengthy message but i think it's worth sharing sue thank you for this she says what we do is ask see which price is the least expensive ask the pharmacy rate versus the medical aid right rather rates. than just letting them do that it just, for you just putting it through Good ask question. them what is the medical aid price compare that to the the price off the shelf almost always she says the shop price at Discam is the least expensive by a significant amount in her experience okay and then she says we don't try and get it off medical aid we do do get it on a doctor's script even if a script is not needed pay for it at the till and then you can claim it from SARS as out-of-pocket oh. medical expenses and get a refund for part of it okay. so if your doctor is issuing um, a script for antibiotics and telling you to get throat lozenges, ask them to put the throat lozenges on the script is what I'm hearing there. Yes. So that it can be reclaimed from the med- SARS. The medical scheme won't pay it. You'll pay it, but you've got... You've, you've got then, something to submit yes. to SARS. Okay. She says the difference is, if the difference is small, we rather put it through medical aid and get it put on the tax certificate. It is extra admin to purchase as out-of-pocket expenses, but we do get a decent medical refund, which, for example, helped during the income reduction in the COVID years. Yes. So Sue's clearly worked the system. And Sue, thank you very much um, for sharing that advice with us. Please forward that to me. <laughs> uh, okay, I will do so. It's very good advice yeah. and, re- and greatly appreciated. So ask the question. Ask the price difference. Don't be embarrassed to ask, is it going to be more expensive if, if I put it through It, it actually tells them savings. that you're a very savvy consumer. Absolutely. Okay. And then thank you too to John in Bloberg who says, I help businesses get reviews on Google. Only you should look out for a business with more than 40 reviews with an average of four or more out of five. That is a sign of a good business or service. It's the only way to ensure that you get good referrals. A small tip for everyone from John. Good. Okay. Thank you, John. More than 400. Reviews. Is that what he said? More than 40. 40. 40. Okay. With that an average of four or more. Okay. Okay, got it. So, yeah, I, I guess that makes sense because it, it, it avoids, you know, they, it, they would have to invest significant effort in, in posting a huge yes. number of fake reviews to drive that, that, that star up. Wendy, we have in recent months tackled poor quality shoes and large sized shoes and shoes having to be returned to China. I confess I didn't see the shrinking shoes coming, <laughs> though. You wouldn't think, right? I have covered this issue before. With several cases, I'm not sure if it was on this show, but several cases of Crocs, maybe not if you can't remember. Mm-hmm. But these are shoes that are um, good brands, well, mainly Crocs, but now the latest case are related to a pair of Versace slides, if you don't Ooh, mind. Oh, shocking us. pink. Okay. Someone bought them from the store in Mall of Africa, um, and uh, she paid 1,850 Rand for them. And sh- they shrank. She was a size, she bought a size four and they shrank to about a size two, she said. Ooh. And so it's not a slight thing. It's a big and one. when she complained to the store, she was first told she shouldn't have washed them or that she must have washed them in hot water. And then they said you exposed them to extreme heat. But she said, well, you didn't warn me about this on anywhere or how. I did some research and I found a, U- a, a UK retail online site that said, um, gave all the benefit all the sort of sh- about the shoes and then in one bullet point said do not respond do not expose to extreme heat or they may shrink um well we're in south africa and it's the height of summer and you- temperatures getting close to 40 in some cases yeah. so uh, um it's understandable that but these are shoes you'd wear poolside or to the beach or they're going to be exposed they're going to be exposed yeah. yes yeah so I don't know what the solution is, but if it happens to you, and certainly in the absence of any warning about this specific issue, do not be fobbed off um, and told that you aren't going to get a refund. I've managed in several cases to get people their money back, as I did in this case, I'm happy to say. But um, yeah, d- don't take no for an answer. And then if you like your shoes, and it happened to me yeah. <laughs> as well, personal experience, I did get my money back. Well, I, I accepted a credit. I was happy for that, mm-hmm. uh, with that. But yeah, d- um, d- I had left my little... Um, Crocs sort of um, Chelsea boots that I used to use for gardening. I'd left them at the front door in didn't get much sun, but I guess when they did in the height of summer, it was intense, and they literally shrunk to little pixie boots with turned up toes. Oh no! <laughs> and so, and I'd made the point. Nobody warned me about this, and it's the kind of shoe. These shoes are worn outdoors. Mm. I mean, all shoes are, but they're worn 
you know, in People sunlight. buy them specifically for that yes, reason. Yes, yes. And they're washable and, you know, so you wouldn't think that there was anything that could go wrong other than them being sliced or something like that. You don't, it doesn't enter your head that That's they could possibly shrink. shrink. So if you've got a pair of, of these kinds of shoes, um, in the Crocs case, they're made of a material called cross light. I wasn't able to discuss, I think, and, and the Versace slides were some kind of rubber, but they have the same uh, response to extreme heat. Um, and and just be aware of that. Keep them. Don't leave them anywhere outdoors. I've been on a, a lot on of a stop or something leave their like flip that. Flip flops on the stop yes. when you come inside because they're yes, outdoor shoes and they're a bit wet or whatever. Mm. Yeah, so don't do that. Okay, thank you for the tip, Wendy. We've got a few minutes in hand, so I'm going to just dive into one or two open line emails, Great. if I may. Uh, Jenny asking an interesting question. She said, "Last month, I paid my credit card on the due date in full." And the bank has now charged me interest because they said it only went through the following yeah. day. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, it was due on the 26th and was paid on the 26th. What are my rights? Not not in your favor, I'm afraid. Okay. It's, it, I mean, if you think about it, it's they can only go on when the um, amount reflected in their account. They, they have got no control over when you choose to pay, whether you choose to make an immediate payment or not. I would say if you're right on the due date, make it an immediate payment, pay the extra, whatever it is, it varies from bank to bank. But that would be my advice because um, if that doesn't happen, you get whacked with interest. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I can understand the rotation because I paid on the due date. But the, but the point is, when was it received? Okay. So keep that in mind. And then this one, a bit of left field, but Matthew and Observatory, thanks for the question. Does Wendy have any insight as to why loo paper has suddenly skyrocketed in price, along with everything else? But um, They'll say input costs. I do know it's an international thing, and I can certainly vouch for the fact that the quality of the um, paper has diminished. It's not – they aren't the products that they used to be. Um, I'm to go into it, but, yeah, um, you might still be getting two layers, but – um, they are not they are thinner, um, and they they not they don't not um, the same number of sheets they don't per roll function as in well. This, yeah. No, the number of sheets per roll is regulated, and that's oh, something really? to watch out for because your standard uh, two ply is three hundred and fifty sheets per roll. You okay. can tell I've done a lot of research yes. on this subject, <laughs> um, and then you might see um, a pr very premium rolls actually at what seems to be a good price and the size of the rolls and the pack that they come in will look the same as the 350 sheet rolls but look carefully and you'll see that they're actually 200 sheets oh. per roll and that is a significant difference so always check sometimes they call them minis but i've noticed a trend where they just fail to do that so if the price seems great um, and it's a fairly upmarket toilet roll check the number of sheets in okay. many cases, it'll be 200. Thank you for that. Um, right, a WhatsApp uh, a warning again of being very precise about getting quotes up front and what they're quoting for mm. and also the danger of just taking the first supplier in the neighborhood. So somebody's saying on the WhatsApp, my mother bought fertilizer from a bucky that was never, roaming in the neighborhood. Never, never, never. Oh dear, I see <laughs> Wendy going pale immediately. Uh, the story is they sell fertilizer by the bag and insisted on applying the fertilizer on her lawn for her they when she purchased two bags. They ended up fertilizing her whole lawn while she wasn't watching and then turned around and claimed for 10 bags, claimed the money from her in a very threatening manner, and my sister eventually paid just to get yeah, rid of them. It's a very well-known scam, and I'm sorry that I, if I haven't ever mentioned it on this show before, but that's the thing. Um, you don't tell, you're not very specific, you don't get a quote, you think, oh great, I've been meaning to apply fertilizer. They go around, they put it all out, and they can't take it back, right? I, although mm. I would say <laughs> this, is not, this is not what I Ordered. agreed yeah. to. You can yeah. scrape, scrape, take it back if you want, but then you don't <laughs> want them near your plants and possibly damaging them. Horrible scam. So never, ever uh, agree to that. Don't okay. let them near your plants or your, or your lawn. All right. Thank you again. Uh, again, it's awful to hear these stories, but it's so helpful when you share them so that others can Absolutely. learn from them and not fall for them. So thank you for that. I think we've got time to squeeze in one last question as a voice note. Let's take a listen. Hi, Wendy. Duncan here. Um, something that is burning my <laughs> anger quite a lot is what happens with the optometrists is they give the special of two spectacles for the price of one or whatever it is. Very good rate. The minute you show them the medical aid card, they, then they say no, but then not giving you that discount, they're going to give you the other amount. 
Okay, so they have three amounts. They have the normal price, then the discounted price, which they offer to the medical aid, and then the special two for the price of one. And companies like Discovery have the goal to say that they're getting a special rate at the, at the optometrist. To me, that's your own money you're paying. You should be entitled to that discount. Um, it really angers me that. Do you know much about that situation? Uh, I don't know if you understand. Because what they're doing is they're saying they're charging a discounted rate, which is 20% less than the normal rate. But no one ever gets charged the normal rate. So it is a um, fictitious normal rate that's just designed to basically crook us. What do you think? I think that definitely sounds like something I need to investigate. And funnily enough, I was too busy with prep for, for this feature to get into it, but I asked Skim, I read the, the, the opening lines and someone was, compl- I don't know if, if, if that was Duncan, but I, I got an email about exactly the same thing this morning. So I'm going to go back and have a look. And if you could share Duncan's details with me, maybe that's not maybe, that's definitely something I need to pull together for another show. Okay, so Duncan, we've got your WhatsApp number, but if you'd like to send us a, um, a, an email with the concrete pricing that you're talking Please. about and the branch you were at where this happened and the brand involved, we'd, we'd be very interested to have that as a case study to follow up. Um, let's finish there because I can neatly remind everybody how to contact Wendy. So Duncan, you want to send an email to consumer at nola.co.za, spelled K N O W. L-E-R. Uh, she knows a lot about consumer affairs. Consumer at nola.co.za. You're welcome to CC me and if you like on Pippa H at capetalk.co.za. And then please do put in the subject line the words Cape Talk and a couple of words sort of identifying the nature of the complaint. So in this case, Duncan, you'd put Cape Talk optometrist discounts or something like that. Wendy then knows to keep an eye out for it in her mailbox and any subsequent correspondence can be grouped together. On the note of subsequent correspondence, though, please try and put everything always in a single email. Um, Very, very difficult with an inbox as busy as Wendy's is to keep track of multiple emails on the same subject. So I know Wendy says it till she's blue in the face, but let me reiterate, please put the full story with all relevant reference numbers and account numbers and dates and names of suppliers into that first approach to Wendy. Don't send an email saying, will you take my case And please write back if you will. Just send it through with all the info in that first mail. Lunch with Pippa Hudson on Cape Talk.